Hey, Justin's picture is on now. That wasn't before. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the June 1st, 2020 regular meeting of the Milford Board of Aldermen. This meeting is being conducted remotely. And as we begin, I wanted to take the opportunity to highlight a few guidelines to ensure business runs efficiently and that all statutory and administrative rules are followed. In accordance with the Freedom of Information Act and Governor Lamont's executive orders, this meeting is being recorded and will be made available on the City of Milford's website. If a member of the board would like to speak, please utilize the raise your hand feature via Zoom. Please do not speak over one and another individual. And when you are not speaking, please keep your phones and computers on mute. After being recognized to speak, please state your name prior to making a statement. With that, will everyone please stand up wherever you are and join me as we pledge allegiance to our flag. Would you get me a pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, 
liberty and justice, justice for all. Madam Secretary, will you please take the roll? Alderman Beatty? Present. Alderman Gaynor? Here. Alderman Jen Antasio? Here. Alderman Golden? Here. Alderman Grant? Here. Alderman Hardiman? Alderman Hardiman? Here. Here. Alderman Harla? Alderman Harla? Alderman Parente? Here. Alderman Frank Smith? Alderman Frank Smith? Alderman Winthrop Smith? Here. Alderman Sutton? Here. Alderman Tranquilly? Alderman Tranquilly? No. Alderman Vitro? Here. Alderman Vitali? Alderman Vitali? Here. Alderman Willis? Here. And I thought I saw Alderman Harla join us. Alderman Harla? Okay. 13 present. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm here. I'm having issues with my uh, computer. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, I I'm here. Thank you. I'm here as well. I had an issue signing in tonight with the uh, with the Zoom account. Greg Harla. Thank you. Are you. Were you able to hear me? I was, oddly enough. Madam Secretary, did you get Alderman Golden? Yes, you Alderman did. Frank Smith. Thank you. Joined us, so all are present. All 15 are present. We do have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Secretary. The next portion of the meeting is devoted to public comment. Please use the raise your hand feature via Zoom or state your name if you're using the conference line. Statements are limited to the legislative function of the Board of Aldermen. The time limits granted to each speaker shall be three minutes. Residents, taxpayers, and electors may address the board at this time or provide comment through email. The board encourages speakers not to express derogatory, insensitive, or offensive statements or to engage in personal attacks against individuals. In order to allow everyone an opportunity to speak, I'd ask that everyone please limit their comments to three minutes. Alderman Sutton, agenda item number three, consideration of minutes for the regular meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Aldermen held on May 4, 2020. A second. Second. Motion has been made second. and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Agenda item number four, there are no special meeting minutes to consider. Agenda item number five, Chairman's Report. I just uh, hope that everyone had a great Memorial Day weekend. I'm very sorry that we didn't have a parade to celebrate it, but I'm sure in our hearts, we all remembering all the soldiers that have gave their ultimate sacrifice so that we could live the way we're living today. Moving on to agenda item number six, the mayor's report. Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. I hope everybody is staying healthy and well as the city continues to respond to this pandemic. I know that we have retooled our operations. I'm happy to talk to folks offline. If you have questions about some of the different things that the city of Milford's engaged in, there are there is much. I'm always happy to chat with any of you if you have uh, a need or a request for an update, happy to provide that. If I can't get the answers, I'm certainly happy to reach out to uh, the department head or the city agency that 
may have those answers. Uh, with that, I respectfully request your consideration and action on those items listed on the agenda, items 8A through 8C. And if you need any uh, backup, I'm happy to provide that um, as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Open up under agenda item number seven, there is no unfinished business. Agenda item number eight, moving on to new business. Alderman Sutton, agenda item number 8A. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for approval for the attached resolution regarding the CARES Act CDBG-CV award as attached to our packets. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? All, all in Ginitazio. Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I couldn't get to the uh, raise your hand uh, <laughs> quick enough, so I just raised my hand. <laughs> um, through you <laughs> to Mayor Blake. Uh, good evening, Mayor Blake. Mayor Blake, this um, acceptance of the CARES Act, is this money that we're going to accept, the 303000 is that going to be used for uh, money that we've already spent? on this pandemic or is that going to be earmarked for um, possibly future uh, future supplies um, in regards to the pandemic? So Mr. Chairman, through you to Alderman Giannatasi, I'll give you the broad outline and we do have Sheila Dravis, our CDBG coordinator and Julie Nash, our economic and community development director to fill in some of the blanks and some of the details, but the CDBG hyphen CV money, which uh, is part of the CARES Act, uh, is getting distributed to those towns that already participate in HUD's Community Development Block Grant program. Milford does, as you see from the next agenda item 8B, uh, Milford on an annual basis is an entitlement community for which we distribute uh, HUD money through the CDBG grant. This is an additional grant through the CARES Act that provides approximately $300,000 worth of relief additional relief, uh, there are guidelines, there are criteria that HUD okay. has put out that we have to comply with. Uh, one of those guidelines is if there are other federal uh, funding programs out there allows us to use this money for, you know, the 25% local match, if that's the case under certain criteria. Uh, there are other things that we are working with uh, our community development block grant co coordinator, Sheila Dravis, to identify exactly how we're going to utilize this money. There, again, is a list of things we can use it for. Some of the things that we have discussed, however, are continuing on um, with a food program for our, uh, for our school students. Uh, their program that serves over 9,000 kids, including free and reduced hot lunch program uh, students uh, will end the last day of school, which is June 11th. And at that point, there's not going to be anything in the city of Milford. We want to try to supplement that given the times we're in, given the, the pandemic and all that means in terms of nutritional shortages and ensure that all of our students uh, have what they need in order to get a nutritional meal. And we're doing that through a whole host of other programs uh, through the Senior Center for our seniors and through the Bethel Center for some of our other at-risk populations. But that's one of the possible uh, funding, or that's one of the possible uh, areas that we're going to use these funds for. Um, but I'm gonna turn this over to either Sheila or to Julie to kind of fill in some of the details about this program because they know the nuances and what type of criteria HUD requires and lays out. So I'll, I can uh, kick it off and then I'm gonna um, hand it over to Sheila. Um, so we, our annual grant can be anywhere between 450 and 550 depending, depending on the year. This is an additional 300 plus thousand dollars to the CARES Act. Um, so to your question about, is this gonna be used um, to prior expenses or future expenses? We're looking at them to be ex uh, used towards future expenses. So as part of your, part of your packet tonight, you received um, the memorandum and some of the ideas that we had and how to go forward using this funding. 
a portion of the funding is used towards um, economic development assistance through the micro enterprise uh, program that we already have in existence. It will be changed slightly to um, focus more on COVID related expenses. We'll also put funding towards the special economic development assistance. Really the only difference between those two, they'll be um, COVID related, but one is for employees that, uh, businesses that have employees five and under, and the uh, special economic development would be for businesses that have employees between six and 20. Um, and then as Mayor Blake mentioned, uh, a portion of the funding will be looked at to use um, towards the Board of Education uh, food program. We're still waiting on word as how we can move forward with that. We're all kind of learning, you know, as we all know, day to day, we're getting new guidance and new assistance. So um, we're working with the Board of Ed and HUD to get more guidance on how we can move forward with that funding. We're happy to answer more questions. I'll let Sheila um, add anything in here that she'd like to add in, or if you have questions, uh, please let us know. Thanks, Julie. Good evening, everyone. I, Good evening. Mayor Blake and Julie did a fabulous job. I would just add that the only, one of the large um, uh, issues or uh, things that HUD would be looking at is to be sure that none of the, the activities we fund could be funded through some other source, excluding FEMA. So um, my concern um, or what they would be concerned about for the, the Board of Education free uh, lunch program might be the state might kick in later. So that's the kind of thing they'd be looking at. Um, other than that, the FEMA, the FEMA portion can, uh, we could do a 25% match, but whatever those expenses are also have to be um, eligible under CDBG regulations. So I'll work closely with the mayor and Julie and whoever wants to, you know, if FEMA does come into play here and we can work on that um, going forward. The beauty of this, this funding is that it's an amendment to the current uh, program year. So there is no plan. Um, there is, uh, um, as I noted in, I think the, uh, the resolution, it has to be approved um, as an amendment by, by HUD and we have agreements that have that go along with it, but um, it has no time period. They're, they're actually waiving the year, the typical year to spend the money. Um, they're talking about two years, but it might even be out to four. So the, the, what we might spend it on, you know, special economic development might come into play in six months or 12 months after we really, you know, find out how businesses are faring and, and if there's a, a relapse, you know, for COVID, um, then it's, it, the money will be available. So that's that's the real um i think that's going to be the the biggest help to all communities is it's is we're not under the gun to spend it asap so uh, mr chairman just to follow up um i guess my concern is have you gotten approval from hud in regards to the after school program uh, lunches um, how is that COVID related? If you can just maybe give me some background on that or how they qualify that. They Sorry. haven't qualified it yet. Um, okay. An email, I'm going to send an email out to them tomorrow morning and uh, so that they can take it into consideration. It, it's not a perfect fit um, because it's the Board of uh, Education. It can be uh, considered um, government uh, business, and that's typically not eligible. Um, but why we're thinking about it is because of the increase due to COVID response. It's in response to the COVID-19, um, you know, uh, economic and health concerns and the increase in, in the food need. So that's, that's what we're hoping. Okay, so I guess my next question is, uh, you mentioned there's no specific time frame as far as spending the money. Um, so it sounds like we're gonna be funding the, the lunches up front. And if this is qualified, then are we reimbursing ourselves? Is that what we're gonna do? 
Um, Go ahead, Julie. Okay, um, so CDBG is always reimbursable. So the funding would have to come first and then we would reimburse the funding. Sheila and I have had conversations about how we can match it up so the city is not out of pocket too long and we'd be able to shore up the funds. But one of the issues is we don't know when the actual funding will hit our account. There's been no word yet as to when that's gonna happen. So, um, and just to back up quickly and Sheila did a great job in explaining that, but um, the Board of Ed, the, the people in our community have been hit very hard. And the purpose of the community development block grant is to make our community whole. So the low income funds is there to make sure that people have housing and food and rent and utilities. So when we get this funding, one of the things Sheila does, which she does a great job about, is to talking to the community and the folks and seeing what the needs are. And right away, one of the needs that came out is, what are we gonna do with these kids um, who really need this assistance over the summer that don't have it and their families have lost income? Um, so we've procured from the Board of Ed uh, an example of the forms that the children that do receive free and reduced uh, lunch programs um, to look at that example. We sent that to HUD to take a look at it because we do have to qualify um, anybody who is re receiving those assistance. So HUD is taking a look at that form to make sure that it qualifies for um, what they're looking for. Um, but when I say qualify, I want to make sure that it's clear that <clears throat> as long as we stay in the guidelines, and um, we adhere to the goals and mission of HUD, they don't necessarily qualify the program. They say, this looks like it's going to work for what we anticipate. Um, and that's a need that we're really seeing in the community between Bethel, um, the housing, uh, the business needs and the food are the items that Sheila and Mayor Blake were able to identify and having this extra $300,000 to shore up our community is um, life-saving in, in many different situations. So we're happy to have it, um, happy to have anyone's input, um, but Sheila's doing a great job. So I just wanna thank her for um, taking control of this. And uh, just so you know, $500,000 that we have each year is, you know, Sheila does with herself and um, one other person. And we're basically doubling what we what we do every year with this funding. So. It's certainly going to be a lot more work. Um, CDBG is incredibly stringent. The amount of paperwork that goes along with these grants is um, incredible. So just want to uh, take the time to thank Sheila for her hard work. And uh, we hope we can really help the community with this extra funding. Thank you. I appreciate you, um, you know, answering the questions, Julie, Sheila. And uh, if maybe you can report back to us at some point um, in regards to how the the funds were actually used, um, you know, at the end of the program. So um, that that's uh, concludes all my questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Frank Smith. Alderman Smith. Alderman Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And through you uh, to Julie. Good evening, Julie. Good to see you again from when the Economic Development Committee had met on I think that was Wednesday. Yes. So. Yes. At the economic development meeting, there was a lot of talk regarding certain things that um, maybe we can do as a city and as small business owners to, to try and kickstart the economy a little bit, maybe certain events, not saying they're planned, but just to talk about them and uh, maybe eventually when it gets a little safer to, to clear them and, and have these things to try and you know, spark and kickstart the economy. So there was a lot of talk about that. So my question is, uh, will any of these funds be used for any of the specific items or events that we had discussed at the economic development meeting? Uh, thank you for your question, Alderman Smith. And no, um, they will not. These um, funds are for low to moderate income assistance. So when a business would apply for this, just for an example, they would have to show that there is a low to moderate income person working with them. They would have to file a household certification. This is to um, keep businesses in business and keep jobs, um, retain jobs. It's not for events. Um, but I agree with the statements you made last week at economic development. And we did talk about a lot of different events that could happen. But um, right now, events are on hold. I think uh, the focus at this point is really just to make sure that the businesses have enough. One of the things that could be used for this funding 
um, for businesses is the PPP they're, they're required to get, hand washing stations, things of that nature. They can apply for these grants and use it for that. Um, so, it's, so it's that kind of concrete assistance rather than events. Um, we do have you know, ways we do events and I do a lot of events and I generally try to do them if, as free as possible. So I'm happy to talk offline and, and talk about some things we can do. I know Mayor Blake and I and, and Justin and uh, Alderman uh, Harla have talked about a lot of different things we could do, but when talking to Director Joseph um, at right now, uh, creating new events is at a standstill. Um, but I think once we shore everybody up and get everyone into a place where they're less worried about rent and utilities and food, then I think looking at events would be a great place or even planning them now for the end of summer would be great. And I'm happy to work with you on getting that going for sure. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that response. And um, as far as the businesses go, mm -hmm. could you just expand a little bit on um, what the process would be like for a business? Is it just a simple application? I know you said HUD has to verify that they have a certain individual working for the company, uh, but what what would the process kind of look like for a company to apply for these funds? And and is it only for if you have a uh, a qualified person working for that business? That's correct. Um, so it'll be an application. It's about a two or three page application that we have now for the micro enterprise assistance program that exists already in the city of Milford that we're going to tweak. Um, that relates it to COVID. So for the 300,000 plus that we have for the uh, CARES Act, the funds are spent a little bit differently than they are regularly with the MEAT program. They have to be COVID related. Um, and yes, they have to have a whole household certification. So um, when people apply, there has to be a low income person working for them. They have to show their retaining jobs. Um, that's how it's gonna work for businesses. but. The application itself, we, you know, we've had applicants before, it's, it's not too cumbersome. I can have Sheila talk a little bit more about the application process because there are things that you know, are in place that people need to qualify for. Uh, but it's a great program. We do this program along with several other um, cities in the state. And I look at it as just a boost to the program because we've heard a lot about from businesses about how they're retaining their employees and how they're going to be able to buy all of the um, items that are necessary to run their business. And this is going to be a way that we can help them. Sheila, do you have anything to add to that? No, I think you've covered it. It's, um, you know, it, the income, the business owner or the employee, needs to be income eligible. Um, so no, it, it's, it's, it's like Julie said, there's a lot of paperwork that goes into this and, and even the programs, but we, we try to make it, you know, as easy as possible and as we're allowed. So, um, you know, the turnaround is tech typically, you know, a week, but with, with all the extra work, I'll probably need some extra hands. Um, and I know Julie and she's got her EDC, you know, a commission that could probably help as well. So um, anybody, you know, all, all the help I can get, I, I'll take. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Nothing further. Thank you, Alderman Smith. Alderman Wiener. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to possibly Julie or Sheila. Um, I know in the resolution it says uh, that uh, households that will or have or at or at less than 80% of the area medium income. Could you give me an idea or give us an idea of what that number would be? Go ahead, Sheila. Sure. Um, let's see. So right now we just got the 2020. So, you know, it's by number of person in your household. Let me just pull it up really quick. So I get you the exact um current number is current number so for a household of 
Let's see. I'm, I'm working on half a screen here, so I have to really focus. Let's see, for an 80% median income, gosh. And of course, I'm, there we go. Okay. So for a household of two, 80% median income is $62,800. A household of three is $70,650. Household of four is $78,500. And it goes up to a household of eight, which is $103,650. 103650 They've gone up this year by a little bit. I haven't had a chance to figure out what the percentage is. Like a lot of years, I'll just like to know what the percentage change is, but that's not one of these years that can be done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any more discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Are we gonna do a roll call? We have to do a roll call. Madam Secretary, would you please do a roll call? <clears throat> Alderman Beatty? Yes. Alderman Gaynor? Yes. Alderman Genitasio? Yes. Alderman Golden? Yes. Alderman Grant? Yes. Alderman Hardiman? Yes. Alderman Harlow? Yes. Alderman Parente? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith? Alderman Frank Smith? Yes. Alderman Winter Smith? Yes. Alderman Sutton? Yes. Alderman Tranquilly? Yes. Alderman Vitro? Yes. Alderman Vitale? Yes. Alderman Willis? Yes. All in favor? Yeah, all in favor. All, fifth, all 15 vote unanimously. Thank you for that. Uh, moving on to agenda item 8B, Alderman Sutton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that the board approves the attached to our packets resolution regarding acceptance of the amended CBBG citizen participation plan. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Alderman Gina Tazio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you, uh, I, this question would go to Julie or Sheila. Um, so just for clarification, this regular grant is being amended because of the inclusion of the CARES Act, the COVID? that we just voted on? Is that, is that the amendment portion of this? The, the citizen participation plan is being amended uh, as part of a, uh, yes, a part of the CARES Act um, funding and legislation, uh, which allows for waivers in order to expedite the, co, uh, the CDBG CV funds. Uh, it allows for the inclusion of virtual hearing, shortened public comment uh, in response to uh, any, well, coronavirus currently, but going forward, if there were just some other um, you know, a national emergency that required us an order of stay home, um, that way we have it in the citizen participation plan uh, going forward. And, and it also includes the, the dollar amount, the $300,000. Is that part of the amendment too? Let's see, did, it, did I throw that into the um, resolution? I, it all happened so fast. I was like, oh, I have to do two, board, uh, two uh, resolutions. It, it really is, I'm sorry, go ahead. It, it, it's not, um, it, it's part of the CARES Act waiver, um, which also only came through because of the CDBG CV. So no, it's it's not. Uh, I don't know. It's it's not because of CARES of the um, CDBG CV, but in in order to expedite it, it had to be amended. 
The citizen action participation plan is meant to make sure that the community has um, opportunity considerations and opportunity to speak. So just like you guys um, change some of your resolutions and regulations to allow for virtual hearings, it's that's what it's doing for us. It's not accepting the three hundred thousand dollars. It's not. Um, uh, it's not really relevant to the funding. It's more relevant to the rules. So in essence, what we're doing is doing what you did. So we can do virtual hearings. We can shorten public comment periods. Uh, the considerations and what we've seen that the potentially there could, and I don't want anyone to get <laughs> worried about this, but there potentially could be another shutdown in the fall if things go awry. Um, and this is giving us the ability to do what you do as Board of Aldermen. Instead of having people sitting at a table, we can expedite what we do, need to do very quickly through a Zoom meeting rather than gathering the group, which we've been doing anyway, but we need to put that in writing just as you did as well. Okay, thank you uh, for the explanation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the time. Is there any more discussion on the motion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Madam Secretary. Alderman Beatty? Yes. Alderman Gaynor? Yes. Alderman Genentasio? Yes. Alderman Golden? Yes. Alderman Grant? Yes. Alderman Hardiman? Yes. Alderman Harla? Yes. Alderman Parente? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith? Alderman Frank Smith? Alderman Winthrop Smith? Yes. Alderman Sutton? Yes. Alderman Tranquilli? Yes. Alderman Vitro? Yes. Alderman Vitali? Yes. Alderman Willis? Yes. Okay, so I have 14 voting. I think uh, Alderman Frank Smith was having technical difficulties. So 14 in favor. Thanks, Matt. Alderman Frank Smith, you, did you want to weigh in on this? Is he back? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith, are you back with us? I don't see him back up. <laughs> okay, so we'll leave it at that. Uh, 14, 14 yes and one uh, missing. <laughs> Alderman Sutton, agenda item 8C. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that the board approves the requested allocation transfer number five regarding the COVID-19 emergency that is attached to our packets. I second. second. We have a motion and a second. Second. Thank you for that. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderman Grant. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to uh, Mayor Blake. Good evening, Mayor Blake. Uh, so I, I really appreciate that Milford is allocating a substantial amount of funds to 800,000 to uh, fight this, this public health crisis. And it really shows that the city is taking and planning on this being a, a long-term effort. Uh, the question that I have is, is any of this 800,000 already uh, earmarked or is it already allocated for, for certain projects or uh, is it just to, to, to what may come, uh, what we're going to use it for? So, Mr. Chairman, through you to Alderman Grant, um, we are cataloging and identifying every dollar that we sent that we spend that's attributable to our COVID response uh, with the great hopes that most, uh, if not all, will be reimbursable through some type of federal grant or state grant. Uh, I think we have already identified over $600,000, uh, which we're sending up through Hartford and then from Hartford to get reimbursed through FEMA. Uh, so we have cataloged each department that you know, spends anything associated with the COVID response, whether it be for PPE or for uh, infrastructure changes to our city department so that we can uh, bring 
employees back safely and have them continue on with city operations. Every single dollar is being cataloged and we are hopeful that we're gonna get reimbursed. Uh, there has been over $600,000 that we've identified and we are continuing on with you know, making renovations to our public infrastructure. We are continuing on with a whole host of things that are focused on COVID related that we're gonna get partially reimbursed or fully reimbursed, uh, you know, depending on the type of item. The, the hope is that for uh, most of it, it is closer to a full reimbursement. A, a lot of the things that FEMA reimburses, it's a 25% local match, but uh, some of the stuff uh, is more. Thank you, Mayor Blake, and uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're, you're welcome. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, roll call vote, Madam Secretary. Alderman Beatty? Yes. Alderman Gaynor? Yes. Alderman Genitasio? Yes. Alderman Golden? Yes. Alderman Grant? Yes. Alderman Hardiman? Yes. Alderman Harla? Yes. Alderman Prente? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith? Yes. Alderman Winthrop Smith? Yes. <laughs> Alderman Sutton? Yes. Alderman Tranquilli? Yes. Alderman Vitro? Yes. Alderman Vitali? Yes. Alderman Willis? Yes. All in favor? Thank you, Madam Secretary. Motion was, was voted unanimous. Moving on to item number nine on our agenda. There is no new business. Under agenda item number 10, moving on to budget memo transfers. Alderman Sutton, agenda item number 10A. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approves budget memo transfers number five and six regarding fund 1005 for fiscal year 20. Second. Motion was made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, roll call vote, Madam Secretary. Alderman Beatty? Yes. Alderman Gaynor? Yes. Alderman Genentasio? Yes. Alderman Golden? Yes. Alderman Grant? Yes. Alderman Hardiman? Yes. Alderman Harla? Yes. Alderman Prente? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith? Yes. Alderman Winthrop Smith? Yes. Alderman Sutton? Yes. Alderman Tranquilli? Yes. Alderman Vitro? Yes. Alderman Vitali? Yes. Alderman Willis? Yes. All in favor? Thank you, Madam Secretary. Voting was unanimous. Moving on to refunds, Alderman Sutton, agenda item number 11A. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approves refunds as attached to our packets in the amount of $69,827.64. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, Madam Secretary. Alderman Beatty? Yes. Alderman Gaynor? Yes. Alderman Genentasio? Yes. Alderman Golden? Yes. Alderman Grant? Yes. Alderman Hardiman? Yes. Alderman Harla? Yes. Alderman Parente? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith? Alderman Frank Smith? <laughs> Alderman Winthrop Smith? Yes. Alderman Sutton? Yes. Alderman Tranquilli? Yes. Alderman Vitro? Yes. Alderman Vitali? Yes. Alderman Willis? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith? I think he's having technical difficulties again. So 14 voted in favor. 14 voted in favor and one uh, missing a vote because of technical difficulties. We're moving on to agenda item number 12. 
reports of standing committees. Are there any reports of standing committees? Alderman Vitale, did I see your hand up? I guess not. Is there, is there, is there any, seeing, seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item number 13. Is there any reports of any special committees? I don't see anyone with any reports of any standing special committees. And under agenda item number 14, there is no executive session. May I have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Chair, before we adjourn? Yes. Um, well, I just I like, die. yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you and good evening, everyone. I'm glad to see everyone is somewhat safe and somewhat healthy. Um, I, think, I think I would be remiss if we didn't address and think about what is happening all over our country in the last few days and the horror, horrific events that uh, need to be addressed. Uh, we know it's a, 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 a problem within our system of racism and whether it be brutality or whatever the issues might generate these kinds of activities in our communities. I just hope that we as a community, because our neighbors to the to the east and the west of us are engaged in um, protests. And I just hope that we are ready in any event to address any of these kinds of things. But I just would pray and hopefully that all of us would be praying that everybody stay safe in our country and that this comes to resolve uh, pretty, pretty soon as far as uh, what is going on and the destruction and the horrific events. Um, I, I think after this and once Hopefully, order is restored that we can get down to the business of, of, of addressing uh, what the unfortunate circumstances are in our country with what I had said before, racism and brutality and, and so forth, that we can fix it hopefully once and for all. So I hope everybody's on the same page that you know, we, we pray that, that this ends pretty quickly. Thank you. Is there a motion? Uh -huh. Alderman Ferrante. Yes, uh, good evening and through you, uh, Chairman, to my colleague, Alderman uh, Vitale. I really appreciate you bringing that up tonight and I think all of us are feeling the impacts of this. And I also really appreciate our chief here in Milford who is the president of the Connecticut Police Chiefs Association. He came out with a really um, excellent, impactful statement and so, and I also know there had been a bit of an incident possibly here in Milford last week, and I think he attended to that really quickly as well. So I want to just express my appreciation, and I hope we can all be in solidarity in um, renouncing this kind of racism anywhere, if it happens in our community or elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Parente. Alderman Frank Smith. Alderman Frank Smith. Can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? Now we can. Okay. I'm sorry, I've been here all along and just to, uh, I was actually trying to get this, uh, the chairman's attention just to acknowledge that uh, I have been here from the beginning. I've having internet problems and between the audio and the video an unstable internet connection, so I apologize. But I've been hearing all the proceedings and uh, since I've come in uh, and have the floor now, I would like to uh, acknowledge and, um, and uh, second Alderman Vitale's remarks. Um, it's, a very, it's a very disconcerting situation in our country now with a lot of very uh, great and uh, probably in many, many years haven't seen anything like this, the civil unrest and the the rioting in the streets. It's very troubling. It's, it shows a, uh, a lack of empathy coming from many of the authorities, the quarters of authority in this country. And I truly hope that as Alderman Vitale said, we resolve it quickly. And it's up to us too at the local level. We're just, we're representing a small portion of the, of the overall American population, but we are a good cross section of it. And I think our words and our deeds help to reflect the, um, what we, 
strive for peace and forbearance and uh and harmony among all our citizens and i want to thank alderman parente and alderman vitale for their remarks thank you alderman frank smith is there any other comments seeing none is there a motion to adjourn i make a motion uh -huh. to adjourn second we have a motion to adjourn and a second all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Well, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone, and stay Thank safe. You too. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night.